Good morning and welcome to worship from St Bryce Kirk on this lovely Midsummer's Day, the 21st of June. Somebody somewhere has decreed that today will also be Father's Day. So, don't know who, where, when, but I do hope that all new dads have been treated to your breakfast made by your youngsters. Since we as Christians believe that God is our spiritual father, I suppose we could argue that every day is Father's Day. And so we should give God our love, our thanks and our praise every day. So we'll start now. Let's start this morning by singing together the wonderful old psalm number 100. All people that on earth do dwell. Let's come together in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we give you our love, our thanks and our praise. We know you made us and you love us no matter who we are, all of us. Skin colour makes no difference to you. And we return that love as we thank you for surrounding us with it. In these difficult days we are experiencing, we thank you too for your guidance that we find in your word. Guidance about what really matters and how we should treat one another. We pray today for justice to prevail. To prevail in the places of the, gov the plans of the government of the world as they deal with the pandemic. 
we pray for compassion to prevail. As we try to help those in our own communities to cope with hardships they find themselves in through no fault of their own. And we pray for your comfort to surround those who have suffered illness or loss of a loved one, whether due to COVID or not. These are difficult days for grieving when you can't have the close support of friends and family around you. We pray especially this morning for people that we know and we name them before you now. And as we travel on through the days ahead, may we always find strength through the prayer taught to us by your Son, our Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you to Beryl. I'm pleased this morning to have assisting in leading worship, uh, Beryl Luke, who many of you will be familiar with, um, and husband George. Uh, George will be reading the lessons for us in the course of the service. So we move on and we listen to the word read to us by George Luke. The first reading comes from 2 Samuel chapter 12. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveller came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a, pe a meal for the traveller who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. And continuing in the book of Jonah, chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they had turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, Take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, 
Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down in a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed at the vine and so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he became faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about this fight? I do, he said, I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. Now Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? We'll th think a bit more shortly about David and the prophet Nathan and the story that lay behind that. It's one of the most dramatic stories in scripture. Uh, and then Jonah, again, a wonderful parable, a, a poem, uh, not to be taken literally, but still rich in truth and symbolism. So thank you for those readings. We're now going to listen to a song which we learnt as a congregation just a few months ago and we had some actions but we're not necessarily going to do that, that's up to you. Uh, but it's from Fishy Music and it's called Bring It All To Me. Anything excited, anything inspired, bring it all, bring it all to me. Everything that's lazy, everything that's tired, bring it all, bring it all to me. Anything that rages, anything that screams, bring it all, bring it all to me. Everything that wonders, everything that dreams, bring it all, bring it all to me. You can bring me anything. You can bring me everything. Just bring it all, bring it all to me. Anything that's easy, anything that's hard, bring it all, bring it all to me. Everything that's perfect, everything that's scarred, bring it all, bring it all to me. Anything you're proud of, anything you're not, bring it all, bring it all to me. Everything you're hiding, everything you've got, bring it all, bring it all to me. You can bring me anything. You can bring me everything. Just bring it all, bring it all to me. I know you I know how you feel because I made you
anything that matters, anything that's real. Bring it all, bring it all to me. Everything you treasure, everything you feel. Bring it all, bring it all to me. Everything you treasure, everything you feel. Bring it all, bring it all to me. You can bring me anything. You can bring me everything. Just bring it all, bring it all to me. You can bring me anything. You can bring me everything. Just bring it all. From the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Jesus is talking to the people in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard what was said to the people who lived long ago. They were told, Do not commit murder. Anyone who murders will be judged for it. But here's what I say to you do not be angry with your brother or sister. Anyone who is angry with them will be judged. Again, Anyone who says to his brother or sister, Raka, must stand trial in court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire in hell. Suppose you are offering your gift at the altar and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift in front of the altar. First go and make peace with them. Then come back and offer your gift. The final reading comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, starting at verse 16. Jesus said, A certain man was preparing a great banquet. He invited many guests. Then the day of the banquet arrived. He sent a servant to those who had been invited. The servant told them, Come, everything is ready now. But they all had the same idea. They began to make excuses. The first one said, I have just bought a field. I have to go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. And still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house quickly became angry. He ordered his servants, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the town. Bring in those who are poor. Also bring in those who can't see or walk. Sir, the servant said, what you have ordered has already been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads, go out to the country lanes, make the people come in. I want my house to be full. I tell you, not one of these people who were invited will, be taste, will get a taste of my banquet. As we did last Sunday, this part of the service, which is a kind of package put together in advance of the Sunday uh, will finish and we'll have a hymn, we'll listen to it. But at the end of that hymn, you can then hear a live presentation. So, so on YouTube Live, you'll find it looking for St. Bryce Kirk uh, and you'll find there the message. So a little bit more uh, from me this morning, if you would care to follow that at the close of this hymn. However, before that, let me remind you that a week on Sunday, a week today, there will be a communion at the end of the service. You can join that by via a Zoom call or you can continue just to watch on YouTube. 
The Zoom call obviously means that you can see others taking part in the communion and we share that and we can see it being shared visibly by that means. Uh, I don't know how that will work in practice. It's all experimental as so much of this is. And now we finish this part of the service with the hymn Inspired by Love and Anger, a lovely modern hymn to a traditional tune. <laughs>